What's good, gang? <laughs> we're back for another Undead Unluck video, and I've been saying we're in dire straits, and I don't want me to beat a dead horse by continuing to say this phrase, but I haven't been lying to you, and it's finally coming into fruition because it's over. It's clipped. Washed. Just call into this loop, and we'll get into why we're gonna just gonna call it into this loop, but I think we're finally getting into the, uh, maybe the third act of Undead Unluck. I don't know how net long this next arc is going to be, but it could be a long one. It could be a bit of a long story that we still have ahead of us because we're going to that next one, dog. We gotta go fix some wrong. But shit, let's get straight into this chapter. So it begins as our boy Rip is just screaming. He's crying. He looks like that new Snapchat fucking filter where you're like, Ugh. <laughs> Rip is just uh, dumbfounded because you just killed Lala and he's screaming Lala and you just see him sad. It's kind of a rehash from the end of last chapter but after that we get into the mind of a young Andy and inside the mind of Andy we see the lad who I mentioned last chapter, uh, last video that we need to finally get in touch with as the divine conqueror. The man who swept lands far and wide bringing nothing but victory to the battlefield. Our boy Victor. Victor is inside of Andy's mind and he tells him, you're kind of in a shitty situation right now, dog. And Andy knows, he's just like, hey, I don't get to see you very often. You don't pop up in here too often. So like, what's good? And Victor's like, dog, you kind of got two options right now. You can keep up this sensitive and compassionate act and you can let Rip have your points if you want to really truly admit defeat. But all Rip's gonna do in that instance is just take the arc and go to save Layla. If you really want to do something else, I can swap in. The Divine Conqueror can pull up, and he can deactivate on Repair's ability due to Victor not actually being the original target. And this is some interesting shit, because although the power system within Undead Unluck is so strong and so robust and it's so uh, widely applicable throughout situations, we do just realize that there are these very rigid or strict rules assigned to negator abilities and the more that you understand a person, uh, say I'm the person who's being used an ability against, the more I understand that ability, the harder it is for me to ignore or overcome that ability. We saw that earlier in the same arc whenever Andy was fighting Unrepair and Unrepair had told Andy, nay, you understand my ability a little bit too much now, dog. It's, uh, the, 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 how much you understand this shit? You're not going to be able to cut your bones off and your body off to repair yourself because you know that is against my negator abilities. But in that same sense, the negator targeter, so like the, the one who's actually using their ability, they have to have a clean mental understanding of the situation as well or else they're not able to fully use their ability in an efficient manner. And we're seeing that right now because all Victor has to do is come in and rip within his mind since he's using his ability to target Andy He's not going to be targeting Victor, immediately being able to repair himself and, you know, get, 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 <laughs> But Victor tells Andy, like, this is an option for you, but only if you're truly resolute. And he says some shit, nod to his girl, you know, every man, you know, every, every couple, every uh, couple, uh, you know, they, they pass on ideas to each other and they pass on ideologies to each other. And Victor obviously loved Juice a lot and he passes on an ideology from her to Andy. He tells her, he tells him, is your vision of justice great enough for this task? Whenever people need to make major decisions, they always follow the path of justice that is shown to them. And this is crazy because throughout the entire series, we've seen this uh, happen a lot. Everybody does follow their own path of justice. And he says that Latla and Rip, theirs is simple. They just want to save Layla. And they're resolute in this goal. They are, as he says, unwavering in their vision of justice. He says that if you don't have an unwavering vision of justice such like this, it's clipped. You can't, I don't, I don't want to swipe it. You're not going to actually be able to get anything done because as you'll learn in a second, you have a very hard task ahead of you if you do want me to swap in. But Andy tells him he's the same exact way. I love Fuko more than anything, and what I want to do is ensure that she's always happy and able to laugh on his joy boy shit, you know, trying to bring parties to everybody. Hey, I'm wearing a Young Thug shirt. This is my favorite artist of all time. If you if you could, drop a comment down in the comment section. Free Thugger, Free Gunna, R.I.P. Lil' Keed. Um, yeah, you can get into that in a different video if you'd like me to, but that's a sad story. <sighs> but as I was saying, 
Andy explains, it's tougher to save Fuko in this case because the only way to save Fuko is a hard path. He, he doesn't want to hurt Fuko because anytime individuals are hurt around Fuko, it hurts her a lot. And we've seen this and he mentions no matter whether it's a friend or a foe, it's always going to hurt her. We've seen this throughout the series whenever Ano died, Ano Un. Whenever uh, Fuko was distraught after Gina's passing, she was crying her eyes out before she went over to the Union. Couldn't even fucking sit still in a seat whenever they were just trying to eat some good old borscht. <laughs> but um, similar to that as well, um, Uma Spring. Whenever Uma Spring was uh, fully kind of understood to be that whole backstory with Unbreakable and everything, Fuko was distraught. She was like, fuck this dog god for everything he's doing, hoeing my boy Uma Spring, hoeing this whole situation. and. We've just always seen that it's hard for Fuko to always be happy whenever she knows that even if I am fighting a foe, even if this bad thing is happening to a friend, it affects me because I care for everybody. And as I mentioned, Fuko always tries to understand anybody who she comes in contact with, so this is a big point for her. But Victor tells Andy that you're thinking too hard about this shit. <laughs> the situation's already too screwed. And this isn't word for word, but this is basically what he's telling her. He says, your thoughts are leading you to an incorrect thing, an incorrect situation, but there's only one way, there's only one perfect way to solve this situation. Let Fuko ride the next arc, and you gotta just, you know, do your shit to link up with her afterwards. He says that this loop has already gone through too much tragedy. There are a lot of things which could have gone better within this loop, and you can look through the entire series and basically just think about anything. Fucking uh, Gina and Void, Rip's group and everything which has occurred with them, Billy betraying the Union, everything which Julius has had to do with him this, that's hurt her, that's hurt her feelings, that's, you know, just been a hard decision to make. There have been a lot of tragedies which have occurred throughout this entire loop, and Victor says that you need to catch, you need, you two need to go on the loop. The two individuals who are uh, able to slay God, undead and unluck, you guys have to go to the next loop rebuild the union and prevent all of these tragedies from occurring and i love this shit so potentially this next arc that's what i was saying i don't know how long this is gonna be but it's gonna be a full third act honestly i'm excited for what to come in on dead unluck because we're about to go right these wrong we're about to go save gina people i see a lot of people within the subreddit a lot of people discussing how are we gonna get gina back is uma ghost gonna save gina nah nigga we gonna go save home girl <laughs> I love that. I need to get an Unchanged video out as well because uh, that was a really amazing arc. But like I was saying, Andy's been told by Victor at this point, you gotta do it. You gotta put the team on your back in order to save everybody. And Andy tells him, I'm ready for that. I am ready to become a god of death if necessary. I'm ready to become the Grim Reaper, the Shikagami. What do you mean? Like I, the Shikagami hype, but it also got me a little bit scared because as Andy uh, tells us to him, Victor squints his eyes in agreement, and he's kind of just like, yeah, I understand your resolve. I understand that you are resolute in what you're trying to accomplish, and I'm down to try to help you out in accomplishing this. But I wonder if this was sort of Victor thinking back onto how he ended up the way he is, this, you know, jaded and freaking pragmatic individual who just is very hard-headed in his own ways, and although he's, you know, the Divine Conqueror, it probably took him a long ways to become this hard-boiled, freaking unrelenting Divine Conqueror type person, you know, like, that's a weird t title to have, and to have this murder on my mind, <laughs> fucking Melly the Menace mindset, probably is a dangerous path to tread, it's kind of like Guts and Berserk, you know, like, as you dive further into depravity, it does affect you in your mental state, so I'm praying for my nigga Andy as he takes up a very hard task, one that Victor did take up in his own life to, you know, try to... Shit. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but after this, we switch back to Rip and Lala as they finally have their uh, final conversation. And Rip tells her that he was able to defeat, defeat Undead thanks to her actions. I appreciate you, baby girl. All he has to do now is, you know, make him def admit defeat so he can uh, get his points and go to that next arc. Latlas says, next time you see me, you better not have all these gosh darn artifacts on. I want to see your cute slender body. You know, it's his little body. <laughs> you know, they're just on their shit, you know, just chat, ch chat the breeze on her last breaths. 
and RIP to my baby girl Atla. She was an amazing woman during her time. I can't wait to see her next loop. She's hopefully in a better place, but this is uh, some this is some shit. As Latlin breathes her last breaths, Rip senses Andy behind him. <laughs> and I know y'all all felt his presence during this fucking scene. Because whenever you see Rip just... And Andy just... Man, that, that felt like something. I was like, oh my god, fucking Jason Voorhees is behind this dude. <laughs> But he tells Latla, you can rest easy as she breathes those final breaths and exclaims, damn it. And they start fighting, Victor and, uh, well, I don't know if it's Victor or Andy right here, but because his hair is still white and down, but they start fighting uh, Andy and fucking my boy Rip. And this isn't even a fair fight. This is not fair at all. Victor immediately just breaks all of the artifacts off of Rip's body. Like, it looks like a child is fighting an adult. This is, but not like some Gon versus Hisoka shit. Like, this is just murder. And <laughs> this is whenever Andy, the end of the chapter, is Andy jumps up in his resoluteness and commits an act that he wasn't even happy to commit, obviously. He hits him with a... Dedorodo. It defeats Vic Rip. And I don't mean defeat, I mean Rip. So R.I.P. Rip. R.I.P. Andy. <laughs> because Andy's about to become a different individual. He might run down this whole Victor path, but I really like this chapter a lot. I hope you all did as well. The art direction in it for one for one thing was beautiful. I love the entire scene of, you know, being inside of Andy's mind. Just uh what it looks like an empty ass place with just Victor in there and just the the way they were speaking the way that they were rehashing and going back through all the different things which have happened throughout Undead Unluck and as I mentioned earlier that panel whenever fucking Andy pulls up behind Rip that shit gave me goosebumps I was like oh my god <laughs> like this dude is literally undead the undead to on his fucking 1980s slasher film shit his Michael Myers Jason Voorhees thing like this dude is just not going into the fucking grave but this chapter really exemplified the dire times that we're within. I think this is like the culmination of the series to an extent where we're finally going to delve into this latter half and or uh, last aura act of the series as we go to this next loop. And I've seen people speaking about this in the subreddit and shit. But yeah, I think this next arc is... I don't know if this is going to be an arc or if this is going to be a, a wide encompassing part of the series. But this, this is the final loop arc we're gonna have to reach that i don't know how we're gonna actually be able to get back my girl fuka i think andy's just gonna have to go take on uma ghost in some way shape or form but that could potentially mean that unruins around and i don't know if unruin survives each loop ah, goodness fucking gracious there's a lot of questions that we still have to ask which is another reason why i think undead and luck still's got a lot of fucking time left in it but that just makes me happy. I see the series picking up more traction and I see more people coming to these videos to, you know, hear about Undead Unluck and, you know, try to get their thoughts off about it. And that's all I want to do. I want to create a community around Undead Unluck because I fucking love this series. And I think more people should be enjoying it. And if you are enjoying it, fucking join a community for it. Like, let's just talk about this shit. Let's get some more buzz around Undead Unluck so potentially someday, maybe in a way or shape or form, we can get a fucking anime. Wouldn't that be cool to see Andy's dick just I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube. Pero, yeah, it's very interesting how we're gonna go to this next loop. I feel like it's gonna be a elongated version of the going inside of the um, books arc whenever we were in Autumn, how Andy and Fuko had to come to a better understanding of themselves and each other. And the way Fuko did that was going inside of that book to um, speak to the past Andy and realize what Victor had done and what Andy had done to reach that point in their lives type shit. I feel like it's just going to be very similar to that. That you have to go through the you have to go through the sad times and the hard times to really appreciate the sunshine, and that's what this is going to be. They've gone through all these tragedies, and now they get to go right their wrongs. They get to go save Gina. They get to go fucking save Autumn potentially. They get to go make sure that Rip and Latla aren't in this shitty situation. Maybe we'll see Layla next loop. Like we get to. We get to experience and see a lot of things in a different light, and I'm very excited to see what that's going to look like. I've never really, I, so maybe somebody else has seen a series has taken a uh, turn like this, but damn, it's just cool. Undead Unluck is an amazing series. 
I don't really know if I have much else to say. I need to edit this shit and try to get it out to y'all by today. So I think I'm just gonna say hasta luego, pero please drop a like. Please drop a comment. And if you could, if you like me a lot, if you like the series, if you like the D-Troop, that's the whole channel, me and my brother, maybe drop a subscribe, but shit, I'll see y'all niggas. Hasta luego, mi amigos.